Finally, let's bring all of these shape layers and their animations together. So what we'll want to do is animate our trim paths. I'm going to open up the entire work area by double clicking on the bar, then set a keyframe at frame 0 for an offset value of 0. I can simply right click on a Mac, control click on the parameter to reset the value to 0. Then I'll set a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. I'm going to change the value for the end a little bit shorter. So we'll change the value from 50% down to 35%. Next, at about a second and 15 frames out, we'll change the value for the offset from 0 to 1. This creates an animation that runs through the entire piece after a second and a half, but it ends after that. In order to keep it looping, we'll use the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, then click on the stopwatch to create an expression. Here we'll use loop out. Make sure that you use the right syntax, so we won't create a capital L, but instead a lowercase l, then OOP, capital O, U, T. We'll use an open parenthesis, then use the quotes and type cycle. Use end quotes and a comma and the number zero. Finally, we'll use the end parentheses and use enter on the number pad. Now our animation will continue to loop out. We'll close this and close our trim paths and the entire layer and rename our shape layer Growth. Because we'll create our new composition here, let's open up the contents one more time, then underneath our shape 1, change the transformation to make this a little bit smaller. So we'll scale this entire unit together and move its position by clicking and dragging on the X value. We'll twirl this up and twirl up our shape. Now we want to add a repeater. And instead of using the position repeat, we'll open up the transformations for the repeater, change the position value to 0, and change our rotation value by clicking and dragging. We'll close this and the entire contents. Now we can simply move this entire piece down to the lower right corner. And then with the selection tool still, I'll click and drag to make this a little bit larger. Now this animation occurs in the corner and we can add the other parts of our scene. Here under comp number 4, we have our kelp. Kelp's fine, except the stroke should probably be a different color. So I'll change the color here to a nice dark green. I'll select the layer and rename this Kelp. With the layer selected, I'll simply copy this, then move back over to comp number 5 and paste it. We can see that the window is a little bit bigger in this comp than it was in the previous comp, so I'll use Alt or Option on the Mac with the forward slash button to make it fill the screen. I want more kelp in the scene, so I'll open up the parameters and add a repeater. In addition to my repeater, I'll go to the transformations, and rather than just having it move, I'll also have it scale as it grows. I'll close this up and close up the other parameters for this layer as well. This can be the kelp in the foreground. I want to add kelp in the background as well, so I'll use Control D to duplicate the layer. Now on the Mac, you're going to use Command D. I'll rename kelp2 to, to kelp background. Then open up the parameters for my repeater again and change the repeater from position of 100 to a greater position and change the scale value to something a little bit smaller. But I need more of these that are closer together. So I'll make my position a little bit closer together and then increase the value of the copies. Then we'll move up to the top of the contents where we see how the shape is being applied. 
we'll change the value of the transfer mode for the shape to something else. Maybe we'll use screen. This way we can see all of the different repeated values for our background kelp. What we want to make sure to do is move our background kelp down to the background. Now with it down in the background, we'll add an effect. From the effect pull down window, a simple blur will do. We'll add a fast blur and change the value for the blurriness to 12. The last thing we want to do is introduce our little octopus. So here he is as we left him last. We'll take off the zigzag value and change the tentacle color on stroke 2 from red to pink. We can choose the same pink by using the eyedropper then clicking inside the body. Next we'll take a look at the keyframes that create the animation for the path. Because we can't create an expression to make these keyframes loop over time, what we'll want to do is grab the last two keyframes, then copy those into the buffer, then move down the timeline and paste them, and move down the timeline again and paste them. We can paste them randomly to change the speed of the animation over the course of our composition. When the last two are pasted, I'll simply click on them and drag the last keyframe to the end of the composition. I'll twirl this up and the entire group, then rename this layer Octopus. I'll copy this, then in my last composition, paste him. He's a little bit large, so all I need to do is scale him. I can use either scale or the entire group transformation. This object is a shape layer and will continuously rasterize. So regardless of whether he's 100%, 500%, or smaller, After Effects will continuously rasterize all of the pieces that make up this animation. I'll click and drag to make him a little bit smaller. Then I'll populate the scene with Octopus by adding another repeater here. Now remember, I can twirl this up, then twirl it back down again to use the Add Repeater, or I can go up to the toolbar and add a repeater here. Adding a repeater places it inside the layer that I have selected, and of course, the repeater is going to repeat 100 pixels across for three copies. I'll add many more copies. Let's start off with a value of 6, then change our transformation for the repeater by increasing the value of the distance between each one. I'll also change the rotation value and change where the anchor point is on each repeated item. I'll change the scale slightly so that each repeated shape is a little bit larger than the last. I'll scrub in the timeline to see each one of these squirming around. However, they're not moving. So I'll go back to frame 0, twirl up my repeater value, and then under the contents for the octopus, animate the entire group's transformation. So under group 1, I'll simply click on the position at frame 0, move out to 1 second in the timeline, and change the Y value. Eight frames later, I'll change the Y value again, making the octopus drop a little bit. Then navigate back down the timeline, then lowering the value for the Y position, remember that's going to move him up. And again, a few frames later, drop him back down again. I'll use end on the keyboard to go to the very end of the composition and move him up. The last part of the animation that I need to address is moving the growth layer down lower into the right hand corner. We'll close these layers up so we can see a little more inside of our timeline. Then with our growth selected, move it down so that the edge occupies the bottom corner here 
By soloing it, we can take a look at what this animation looks like as it loops out. From the very first composition, we'll twirl up layer 1, then grab the layer called Ramp 720 and copy that and paste it into our new composition. We'll move this solid down to the bottom, then with the cursor hovered over the comp window, use the tilde key to bring this to full screen. We'll use zero on the number pad to create a quick RAM preview. So here we can see that with only a few shape layers and a handful of keyframes, you can create a composition that has multiple layers of animation going on within each shape layer. Because all of these shape layers are vector-based, we can zoom in to our heart's content while always maintaining a nice, clean image.